Welcome to Save As Ability, a podcast to educate and inform you about disability employment issues. My name is David Darkangelo, and I'm your disability policy expert. Hey everybody, it's David Darkangelo, back with another episode of Save As Ability. Been getting great reactions, so please let's continue that going. Like, subscribe, share, all that jazz so we can uh, get our message out. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about ADA Title I basics. This is not meant to be an in-depth guide. Really, what we're trying to do is give people uh, an overview of the Americans with Disabilities Act, Title I, which is employment. We had talked about that a little bit. So let's get right into it. Much of what we're going to be using here today is my experience that I've gained over the years, but much of that comes from guidance that's put out from the federal government, particularly the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, the EEOC. They issue various guidance, opinions, and and uh, information sheets, fact sheets, things like that. And much of that comes out through other organizations, too, in the federal government. The Department of Labor has a great agency, the Office of Disability Employment Policy, ODEP. And ODEP has a program called Ask Jan which is a free resource available to all Americans and employers in particular, the Job Accommodation Network. And really the guidance that they put out is very easy to understand and it's, uh, it's very well done. So much of what we're going over here today comes from things like that. And I would, at the end, we'll, we'll, I'll give you the website and we can talk a little bit more about some of the other resources. So Let's start at a very high level, like what is the ADA, right? We've talked about this before, but the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, is civil rights law, and it's federal law that's put in place to protect people with disabilities from discrimination, because unfortunately, the data indicates that many people with disabilities in work environments have encountered discrimination and stigma. Uh, so the ADA has five titles, Title I being employment. That's how important employment is to people with disabilities, to all people, really. Uh, and again, it's meant to protect people from discrimination. So we're going to go over some concepts here. And really the first one I think that's important in Title I is that of what we call a reasonable accommodation. So what is a reasonable accommodation? Well, a reasonable accommodation is something that's laid out in the ADA and really it had even precursors in other laws, uh, whether it be the Rehab Act or other regulations that were be trying to be promulgated. But it really is a big part of the ADA meant to put in place to just do that, accommodate both the employer and the employee. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then some other things too, like uh, it's important to understand who must comply with the ADA? Because there's a little bit of a misconception out there among some employers, some employees that all employees and all employers, and I don't know if that's quite accurate. Really, when we're talking about Title I of the ADA, we're talking about covered entities. So that's one of the concepts I want to talk about is covered entities. So a covered entity must comply with Title I of the ADA. Well, what's a covered entity? A covered entity includes private employers that have 15 or more employees, state and local governments, so state and local governments as employers, uh, employment agencies, uh, labor organizations, and joint management labor committees. So all of those larger types of employer organizations have to comply with Title I of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Now with that, who's then protected, that's for on the employer side, what employees are protected by Title I of the ADA? And so really what we're talking about there is another term, a, a distinction here, which is qualified employees with disabilities. Well, what does that mean? Qualified means that the individual with a disability, the worker, must be able to do the job-related requirements of the position and has to be able to do the essential job functions of the position with or without a reasonable accommodation. 
Well, what does that mean? Let's go into that a little bit. In order to be able to be covered and and uh, qualified and then get your reasonable accommodation, right? Uh, you've got to be able to do the essential job duties or the essential functions of the job. So that is, uh, what, let's use an example. Well, the essential job duties of an iron worker may be something like, you have to be able to go out under the end of the beam and rivet and weld the beam. Well, if you're a person in a power chair, you probably are not going to be able to fulfill those essential job duties. Okay. So that's a very specific example to give you an idea of what we're talking about when we're talking about those essential job functions. All right. It is though in the ADA title one, the obligation of the employer to provide a reasonable accommodation. What is that? A reasonable accommodation is a modification or adjustment to the job itself the work environment, and or the way things are usually done that can enable that qualified individual with a disability to enjoy equal employment opportunity, okay? So really what we're trying to create here is parity. That's the goal of this whole thing is to create a level playing field so both the employer and the employee are treated fairly and everybody's given the same opportunity to succeed, right? Same access to opportunity. So an equal employment opportunity is the opportunity to attain that same level of performance that anybody with or without a disability would be able to attain. There's another part to that too, and that is that equal employment opportunity says that uh, equal benefits and privileges of employment are available or made available to the employee with or without a disability, okay? So what does that mean? Again, it means that we're not picking winners and losers because of the person's disability status or lack of disability status, right? Let's go back to some of the earlier episodes and really the nature of this podcast is it's about ability. You cannot have a disability without first having ability. And work and jobs and these job descriptions that we're talking about, that's what it's based on. What abilities do you bring to that job? Can you meet those essential job functions? Okay. The ADA requires reasonable accommodations in three aspects of employment. The first one is in the application process. The second one is, as we just discussed, the ability of the employee to do the essential functions of the job, to perform the essential job duties, and then to enable the employee to enjoy the equal benefits and privileges of employment. Okay. So that's really the three things to satisfy the reasonable accommodation. And this is all within Title I of the ADA. These are very important bedrock concepts that Really, once you have these, then you can work through the remainder of the the items that come up within the interactive process, being able to accommodate somebody with or without a disability. Okay, so let's go over some examples. So what are some examples of reasonable accommodations? These are things like making physical adjustments, okay, making existing facilities accessible. So making sure if you're in a power chair that there's a ramp, making sure that if you're blind that there are uh, screen reader technologies provided. If you're deaf or hard of hearing that there's captioning available or uh, communication access, effective communication standard is being met, things like that. Uh, it could also be things like modifying a work schedule, tweaking that so that the person with a disability can be able to be accommodated modifying equipment so that you know persons with physical disabilities can have access to the equipment in the same way in a parity way that people without disabilities do so uh and then really as one of the last things you want to explore if you're an employer is reassignment to another job okay uh the EEOC has said that that really they want that to be like the last thing and really, if you're an employer, you want to try to accommodate somebody because you have 
all of that great equity invested into that employee. You don't want to lose that. You don't want that to, to, to leave your organization. So these are really benefits both for the employer and for the employee. So I really like to think of reasonable accommodations as a win-win, both for the employee and the employer. Okay. So things like job crafting, uh, you know, all of the things that an employer can do to make sure that those essential job functions are done in the most productive way. And we have data. There are there, there is significant data out there that indicates that often these accommodations are little to no money uh, and that people with disabilities can be some of your best employees. There's real data to, to back that up. So, you know, I hope this has been helpful. Really, this is just meant to be an introductory basics into some of these Title I uh, high-level concepts here. And there's resources available, whether it's the EEOC guidance, whether it's askjan, askjan.org, or the Office of Disability Employment Policy. There's plenty of other things out there for you as well. The ADA network is out there. So, you know, a quick Google search will find you plenty of resources out there that are all free, all free for the employee, all free for the employer. This is your federal government at work for you. So I hope this is helpful. We'll be back again to cover more of this. But for now, it's David Darkangelo. Save as ability. Let's focus on ability. Let's get people employed. Hope you have a great day. For more information about disability employment issues, please visit our website, disabilityemploymentsolutions.com. The Save as Ability podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, our YouTube channel at Disability Policy Expert, or wherever you stream your podcasts. Subscribe, stream, rate, and review our shows. Your ratings and reviews help our show reach new audiences. Produced by Pod Pro Entertainment. Save As Ability lives within a network of podcasts located at podproentertainment.com. Hashtag the new radio. Again, my name is David Darkangelo, and I'm your disability policy expert. Until next time, thank you. I hope you have a great day. <laughs>